happy late Halloween yesterday. Day after Halloween. Yeah. <laughs> How's it going, everyone? Welcome back. Did everyone have a good Halloween? We are recording this the day after Halloween. Yes, the day after a child walked into our house. <laughs> we were passing out candy. We didn't get a lot of tr- trick-or-treaters. This cute little kid. No, there, was like a, there was like a group of like seven kids. And he was the littlest. Oh, he was so cute. And he went up on the step to the house. And he started like going in the house. But I think he just wanted um, to pick out the best candy. <laughs> yeah, it those, was so cute. Those are the best parts of Halloween. <laughs> yeah, so did everyone tell... We, we, you know, we. this is the day after. And by the time this video comes out, it'll probably be two days after. But in today... Today's video, we are going to talk about, it's it's a Viv and Beth video. It's a Biv video. We're going to start with kind of the more, I don't know how to say, down downer news or concerning news. Sad. Sad <laughs> news. Then we're going to go to happier news. So, so we'll start with this story. This came out a couple hours ago. We got word that Viv um, was granted a leave of absence from uh, Arsenal. So we're going to talk about that. But kind of let's back up a little bit. This season... Everyone had noticed she had not been not just playing her best, but she didn't look amazing. She hadn't been starting, first of all. And that's a big thing. I mean, one of the best players in the world not starting. There could have been a lot of reasons for that. You know, that doesn't mean she's just not starting on Arsenal. But people did notice that. Going back even further, we remember how she played at the Euros and you remember how she got COVID, you know what I mean? Even the healthiest person in the world, that can really, really take it out of you overall. Yeah, you just don't know how your body's going to react. Yeah. And does everyone remember she played the 120 minutes in the game against France? And she looked worn by the end. She looked so worn. And I mean, she she really put her body to the the physical limit of somebody's yeah, body. Absolute that you put. limit. But then someone also made a comment. And but then someone made a good point. And, you know, she was coughing actually before COVID. She got COVID in over the summer. So, you know, we don't know any of the details about what's going on. We do know in the last game against Zurich, she was beat up by the end of that game. She was beat up. Poor Viv. She got hit in the head from the goalie hitting her head. We remember that. She had something wrong with her hand. I don't exactly know. It was bandaged. Which bandaged. Yeah. And then she also uh, just overall just looked. I mean, by the end of the game, she had the ice pack on her. She was beat up. Um, And then they did play a game against West Ham three days ago, and she came in at the 70th minute. So she did play. She came in at the 70th minute. I did not watch that game, but um, obviously there's something going on because she was granted leave. I'm going to read a tiny bit from the Athletic article, and then, yeah. Arsenal forward Viviana Miedema has been granted a leave of absence. The club told the Athletic, Viv has been granted some time off to rest and recharge. We are supporting her closely and she will return following the international break. She has left the UK for some time off ahead of the November international break which begins next week. Arsenal are due to face Leicester in the Women's Super League on Sunday with their next fixture atop of the table clash against Manchester United on November 19th. The Dutch international has not been named in Holland's squad for their upcoming internationals against Costa Rica and Denmark. Miedema has struggled for form since the start of the season, scoring just two and assisting one in five league games. She spent two of the last three games out of the starting lineup, a rare occurrence in a prolific Arsenal career that has seen her score 120 goals. So yeah, so that it doesn't say a lot what's going on just to rest and recover. Uh, She won't be playing at the international games with with the Netherlands so she won't be playing the, those games she's gonna miss a game against Leicester and so but we don't know much um you know this could mean a lot it could mean it could mean something that someone just has to recharge I saw someone post this on Twitter that between them pushing back the Euros and the Euro schedule and the World Cup qualifiers and the regular season it's a lot for these women to be uh under the stress of all these games Right. Yeah. I mean, that sounds exhausting for anyone. Yeah. So feel better, Viv. Um, Yeah. We just hope she's doing okay and gets better, feels better, and is yeah supercharged for when she does come back. Has a few good weeks of just rest, so she can really, really rest her body. Okay. So part two of the video. This is where things are gonna get a little bit spicy. Spicy. You know, Beth always comes through with information, with the tea, with everything, because (laughs) I did not hear the story. This. And I just saw this re- like tonight. Um, but Beth did an interview and it was pretty spicy. I, mm. Beth gives the get, gives the content everyone wants. She really does. And she I does. love her she for that. She does not hold back. No. She's just an honest bae. 
And we love it. Beth Mead, I believe her book has come out. I don't, I, she has a book that's coming out. And I believe it is, it is, that has come out. It has already come out. And you know, it, so, so she's doing a lot of interviews. So she went on a podcast uh, called the Athletic Woman Podcast. I believe that was the title of the podcast. And it was about a 35 minute interview. And she talked about a lot of things. I haven't listened to the whole interview yet. I plan to, but I just listened to the parts that we talk about Viv. Um, but I do plan on talking about, but she talked about, you know, things that are in her book and playing, not making the Team GB for Olympics, I believe. I, but this interviewer went for it. I mean, she really she went for it. She also didn't hold back either. <laughs> no, because she was asking her the good, the, the, the tea everyone wants. Um, because she asked her about Viv. She talks about her and she, you know, she asked her what it's like. And then then Beth gave the information. I mean, the things we, of course, you want to know, but it's almost like the things we need to know. No. <laughs> and I'm as fans, you know, obviously, they only share what they want to share. But hearing these things, it's, we love it. I mean, it's just so fun. You know what I mean? Um, we love hearing what happens behind closed doors. Yes. Yes. Demi. Oh. Exactly. We're going to play a bit of this podcast and then we're going to talk about it. You're now also part of a power couple. I mean, if you're taking two <laughs> supreme footballers, yourself and Viv Medebar, you're obviously in a relationship. You went to the Ballon d'Or together recently. We won't mention that plus guest comment. I know that you laughed that off. Yeah, that's my, no, that's my favorite comment of the year, so far, <laughs> I think. Um, how, how is it when, when you're with someone that plays? Are you, are you spurring each other on? Are you banning any talk of football when you're at home? Depends on what's happened that day or what in that game. Uh, I think it's getting that fine line and that balance. I think for us, we understand what each other are going through, our schedules, how much and how demanding it can be, most physically and mentally. So in that aspect, we understand each other's jobs, um, which is always nice. But sometimes, yeah, you want to switch off from football. So sometimes you just have them days where, you know, we, shan't, we won't be talking about it. But I think we've got that, yeah, that kind of balance where we, we we do the best of both, help each other. And we're pretty competitive, to be fair, between the two of us. So I've been doing well, so now she wants to do better. And the same for me. So hopefully we can make each other better in that aspect. But, yeah, getting the balance, that fine line balance right is, I think, very important with our relationship. So that first part of the interview was, in, you know, it's kind of things we've kind of heard that, you know, what is it like? dating someone who is you know do you talk about football at home and whatnot it's kind of like the standard answer yeah we're competitive we do it depends on the day um the first part of that was when she had the guest comment from the ballon doors <laughs> Beth love that so that's too funny love to hear that but this is where it gets juicy there will be plenty of people from your fan bases wanting to know the answer to a question <laughs> that you reveal in the book which is who mm -hmm. asked who out <laughs> coffee shop <laughs> Yeah, I um I actually asked Viv uh to be my girlfriend, but I I was adamant I wasn't going to do that. I said I think I said that in the book, but yeah, in my head I was like, I am not asking you to be my girlfriend. That is not a thing I want to do. Uh, but she kind of took the reins on quite a lot of things. The first "I love you," the first kiss. So I thought I better uh, step up to the plate this time. So, yeah, the timing was right. Obviously, it was a nice little coffee shop when I went to meet her after we'd just beat them um, in the friendly before the Euros. But <laughs> just trying to break her up the following yeah. day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, she, she, I don't think she'll let me live that one down because I was adamant I wasn't going to ask her. Okay, so they're very interesting. For, I guess it's in the book. We'll have to get the book and read it. But in the book, she talks about these things. And the interviewer asked her, she said, you know, brings up what's in the book, saying who asked who to be each other's girlfriend. Or she knew that Beth had asked Viv to be the girlfriend. And mm -hmm. Beth lays it on the line. She goes, you know, I asked her. I didn't want to necessarily ask her because I, I, I wanted, you know, a lot of times people want to be the ones who are asked, you know. But yeah, I wasn't want to play the cool guy. Yeah, but she didn't want to give Viv the satisfaction of being the one being asked. But she, but she dropped the deets of Viv was the first one who kind of made a move. The first mm -hmm. I love you, the first kiss. I mean, that's what a move maker. No. That is something. I love it. <laughs> yeah, just you, you just hear those things and it just kind of puts you there. You know, you kind of live in their world like, oh, that's how it happened or that's what went on. The other interesting part was it was right after the friendly 
after England crushed the Netherlands. And then that next day, Beth officially asked Viv to be his, her girlfriend. See, if I were her, I would be scared at that moment. I'd be like, um, would she want to after we yeah. just crushed him? <laughs> like, just asked her. And she'd be, like, gutted still, you know, but. Yeah, so she asked her right oh. then and there. And, you know, a lot of people were talking about, you know, that video we have of uh, Dan and Beth reuniting after that game, that same exact game. And a lot of people were like, little did everyone know that they're thinking they're, Beth still has something for Dan. Or not really, but. Dan's long old news by that time Viv and Beth the next day are going to become official I love to hear those kind of things I love to be kind of put you know fly on the wall kind of thing yeah um but also I did think it was kind of interesting they made it official that was June 25th but then they kind of went public with it less than two months later I mean that turnaround is pretty big too you know for such a short turnaround to go as public as they did to go as out there as they did weren't holding back after that yeah, they're open books they felt comfortable enough so yeah less than two months later. yeah then he they ask if it is uh does she find viv more attractive because she's so good at football and Beth goes <laughs> yeah who yes. wouldn't basically hell yeah <laughs> who wouldn't Hotty. anytime anyone's really good at something it's just they become so much more attractive i think i'm really good at tying my shoes so <laughs> Especially for women, when we see other people really good, whether it's a man or a woman, depending on if you're attracted to men or women or both or whatever. I think women really find something about another person who's really good at something and like is all about that. So that's yeah. very attractive. It's interesting. And then she I'm going to play this part. I think the way she said it is so interesting. The interviewer asked, well, um, do you guys talk about football at home or, you know, who do you guys who do you guys root for? And. Beth said she likes Man United, and then Viv, she said Viv really likes Liverpool. So Man United versus Liverpool. There might be like a rivalry there. I'm actually not quite sure. But then Beth says something really interesting. So you must watch football together as well. You're a Man United fan, I'm told. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. I've seen Viv on the Spurs stadium tour. I don't know whether she knew that I was there that day, but I saw her going mm. and have, having the Spurs stadium tour. I, I don't know. She's surely not a Spurs fan. She isn't. She's actually a Liverpool fan. Ah, so it's still not okay. ideal with us two. No. <laughs> Man United and Liverpool, but um, yeah, she's a Liverpool fan. We went to a couple of Champions League games last season to watch them play. That was when we first started our getting on should I say so but they were, went to a few Champions League games and yeah she's a big Liverpool fan and I'm a United fan so it's not ideal but we take we wind each other up every time the results come in at the moment <laughs> <laughs> okay so she talks about how they went to Liverpool the during the Champions League I guess Man United played Liverpool and the way she kind of I don't know stumbled on her words and that's when we got to that's when we the relation oh that's when we first started getting on <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was so funny because it's clear that's when things really, you know, sometimes because when you're friends and then you go to an event or something happens that things kind of switch into something else is going on. Mm, yeah, That's when it was during those All games. So we we totally, we have a lot of this timeline down, you know. It, it, it is not even have to do the homework. They're giving it to yes. us. <laughs> so we have a timeline and I mean, it's exciting. I love that, you know, Beth shares this and I'm maybe she even shares more in the book. We have to get this book. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure it all still share. Spill it all. But that I think the timeline is so interesting to me from those Champion Leagues game having flirty, flirty, kissy, kissy, and then going from the friendly match and her beating Viv. It, that must have been an interesting conversation at the coffee shop. They go to the coffee shop. England just beats you five to one and god i would have loved to have been there barista yeah, yeah barista, I know. <laughs> and basically we you know hey can we make it official will you officially be my girlfriend and then viv's probably like well you just beat me five to one but okay <laughs> okay now somebody needs to ask her <laughs> next um how exactly did you ask her oh yeah I'm what curious, were the words what were the words because that way that the way viv's the way beth said is that Viv, Viv got the satisfaction of having Beth ask her. So she didn't have to ask her. But the fact that Viv went for the I love you's first, the kissy kissies first, maybe Viv wouldn't have officially asked her because she was like, no, I did those things first. You have to be the one who asks. It's such, a, such a competitive couple thing. Yes, it is. <laughs> like, very... I'm not doing it until you do it. Yes. Or I'm not going to be the first one to do it. Beth to go to Viv and say that, I mean, I love that. And, you know, at that point after 
England just kind of really, you know, had their way with Netherlands, then it's almost like Beth, he's not, we just beat you and will you be my girlfriend now? <laughs> Maybe it was easier for Beth to say it. So she would, you know, she already had one up by having the bragging rights of winning. So. Yeah. Oh, maybe she wrote it down on a piece of paper. Somebody asked me out this way uh, in high school. Oh, did they? Um, will you go out with me? Check yes. <laughs> check the box for yes or check the box for no. For no that would, I would have loved that. I would have loved that. <laughs> oh, have the barista do it. And, oh, uh, coffee art. Latte yeah, art. Latte yeah, yeah, yeah. art. Hey. GF question mark. Points for <laughs> creativity. Creativity originality and effort into that so <laughs> but uh so i love that story that beth is the one who officially asked and also going public two two months later so um Hot. quite a story quite a story and viv said yes but what did everyone think about that did everyone love that interview Thank you. Oh, i love it what did everyone think you know best i hope viv is okay if you know, obviously, we do not know what's going on with her health, you know, would never speculate on that. Other than he's having all these matches together, it's hard on your body, especially when there is so much pressure on Viv. The pressure on the Dutch team is so hard on her. The, you know, it's so heavy on her. The pressure on Arsenal is so heavy on her. But the pressure on Viv was immense. And she did have COVID. I mean, whether or not is there's any side effects of any type, whether or not there is, there is a lot of people who have long term effects and you just never know what that is going to do your do to your body. Well, my mom got COVID, mm -hmm. and her she said her legs mm, still hurt every yeah. day. Yeah, so maybe her legs hurt. I yeah. mean, as a soccer player, you're yeah. on your legs a lot, a lot. Yeah. You use them, so yeah. not speculating or anything. But who knows? Um, just saying that's what happened to my mom. And then Viv got so beat up in that ma match against Zurich that uh, she needed a break. I, I don't see how some human could not need a break after all that that she has gone through. So, Carol, pff, I'd be on a hiatus. And I'd be also, in Ibiza. Yeah, and it's also the fact that she can do it at Arsenal and feel supported because I'm sure if she went to Barcelona who knows if Barcelona would have been as supportive you know what I mean yeah. so what did everyone think what did everyone think about that Beth interview we got the details love it and best wishes to Viv hopefully she feels the best she can questions comments down below what does everyone think uh more videos coming out soon there's a lot there's a lot of content that came out from the the Woso in the last couple weeks so. Yeah, so expect more from us questions comments down below we'll talk to everyone later have a great day bye, bye.